live on the Overdose Talk Network. It's the Lonely Show! That's right, it's the Lonely Show number three. <clears throat> I am your fearless leader. Bow to me. Thank you for once again <laughs> for being with me. Uh, I got a lot of good feedback from the first two shows. I mean, for me, a few uh, a few fucking comments is, is kind of a lot. So there you go, buddy. Kicking some ass in my world. Um, sometimes we don't see the comments on the Ustream feed. Uh, Ustream... It's hard to complain about it because, shit, uh, I'm making my own little radio show with nobody backing it and, and no confidence from anyone but my own, uh, myself and, uh, my ability to click a fucking mouse. It's the only way this shit got going, so. It's hard to complain about it, but <clears throat> it's not the easiest to fucking use site for a bunch of reasons so sometimes we miss these these little uh comments and stuff uh, and come to think of it i don't have that shit in front of me right now joey from ustream was with me on the past couple lonely shows i think and he was he was really feeling it and uh i appreciate that joey i'm not sure who you are but uh I really do appreciate the uh, the nice comments you left. Um, for a while, I've kind of been avoiding doing the topic that I'm going to get into because I didn't want to a start a fight, and I didn't want to also give this person more credit or notoriety than they deserved. But, then I said I was going to do a show, and I wasn't prepared, and I thought, cha-ching, I've got a half hour on this. So, the deal is, when I started the Sunday Evening Overdose, I wanted to do a weekly podcast of about an hour. What I clearly figured out or what I what I what I really uh, uh, f- uh, swiftly figured out was that I'm a piece of shit that just wants to talk all the time and just be an asshole and pretend like I matter more <laughs> than other people. That's the whole thing with with podcasting and and doing all this shit is like I think you need to listen to me. I don't know why. I just feel like that. I just fucking, when I'm driving around, listen to other people uh, do their talk shows and whatnot. I'm going, no, fuck that. Me. Me. I hear that echo in the background, too. Let me kill that shit. Sorry. All right, there we go. Back on track. I don't know that I can fully explain it, but... I just can't stand it when someone else is talking, (laughs) and I'm not. And I think a lot of people, if they're honest, if they're into broadcasting and and, and doing this shit, it's just this, like, this neurotic, this just, this drive to just, you need to hear me. Um, So it's, it's, it's a weird thing from its conception, and I didn't plan to have a co-host, but uh, the Earthling, as he was known, as he was, as he came to be known, uh, I felt like was was a talented guy, and and he really understood the rhythm of an entertaining talk show and how to be spontaneous, and he really kind of lined up with a lot of the views that that I have, and it was it was a cool thing. We had worked on another sort of uh, talk radio parody thing uh, a couple years back called Conscious Nexus, 
uh, Conscious Nexus is still on YouTube. You can find all the things we made. Um, we were parodying a a you know just talk the talk show format <clears throat> in general, and we were kind of doing a lot of effects and music with it, and sort of taking uh, taking you through different topics in in sort of a uh, entertaining dumb way whatever i thought it was really cool um he started calling in to the sunday evening overdose and our back and forth was nice i thought it was uh entertaining other people who were listening to the show seemed to respond when he was involved i said why don't you start dropping into the studio after you get off work he got off work late and he starts coming in Excuse me, pausing for whiskey. Um, he starts coming in, and we start building the show. We have a couple of things happen that are hilarious, and we go, "Wow, we can we can do this!" And and we're just broadcasting to our friends and our friends of friends and the guests that we can get on the show and their network. Very small audience audiences, you know. I mean, to the to uh, in, and still very small we're basically schooling ourselves we didn't go to broadcast school we are huge fans of the genre and just thought we could do it so we're, we're basically schooling ourselves as we go and that's the idea it doesn't matter it doesn't need to be glamorous um so we so we start getting our little bit of response that means a little bit to us and we start trying to develop this this show and from the beginning he has this sort of childish attitude of like you know I'm only willing to to do so much and you can't rely on me for this and that and it's the whole thing is this you know this thing I've seen a million times from people who are non-committal with uh, creative projects and they want to be involved in something cool they don't want to be just a dude that works in a kitchen and doesn't do anything. They don't want to be a fucking dude that that has nothing going on. But they also don't want to be a guy who does any actual amount of work. So <clears throat> while they'll never... They know they have talent. All right, That's the irritating thing about these fucking people. They know they can keep you on the hook because you can't afford to pay anyone. And they have this marginal amount of talent that you need to get your fledgling project, uh, you know, up in the air just a little bit. And they will exploit that for everything they can get emotionally. I've seen this a million times, and he was just another in a long line of pussy motherfuckers that will never be shit on their own. But they need somebody like me. Somebody like you, if you're really identifying with this, you know what I mean. Somebody like a, a, a person who's willing to stick their neck out and willing to do a little bit more work and willing to fucking uh, have a vision and and take it from conception to creation to to promotion to uh, to everything else. Whatever. Look, they don't they don't appreciate the process. And it's just a very common fucking thread. And people that just, they don't want to be normal. They don't want to be just, I work at the White Hen. This is this is me. This is my whole life. I need a thing. I need a thing I got to be a part of. But I don't want to do the fucking work. I don't want to do any of the goddamn work to try to make it worth anybody's fucking time to ever be successful with this shit. So that's the kind of fucking attitude. But still, we put up with it. Whatever. Fine. We put up with it, and um, <clears throat> he was really fucking funny on the show, I thought. And we got to some extremely interesting places. And I'm happy with what we're doing now as a talk show. But when uh, the Earthling, as you wanted to be called, was on the show, we, we got to a lot stranger, angrier unique places it was interesting it just was fucking entertaining it really was some of the shows we did were really entertaining now 
there were some big fucking problems because he doesn't have a vocabulary. Now, he was great at the rhythm of talk radio. He was great at the vibe. He understood what was exciting and what wasn't. I mean, he really had fucking great instincts for doing this. But he had no understanding of the language. He just couldn't string, you know, three or four intelligent sentences together at a time on most days. And that was that was getting to be a problem. I tried to kind of like um <clears throat> I tried to kind of give him a space on that and just let him be who he was cuz people communicate differently. They oftentimes rub each other the wrong way just because they have a different standard for language and communication. So I tried to give him some space on that, but I feel like every time that he perceived that people loosened up on him for that, he would just try to make it worse. You know, he'd try to go further down the direction of sounding like a fucking idiot to try to appease who, I, you know, <clears throat> that's the other thing. Excuse me. He wanted to appease people who were unintelligent. Now, he tries to play this fucking act like he's from this this hard knock lifestyle. <clears throat> he tries to he tries to play this thing like his family was just hardcore gangbangers and and shit was crazy where he grew up and Mexicans were trying to kill him and blah 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 and, and whatever bullshit. I I don't know. Um From things I've heard and things I've pieced together, it wasn't really all that true. Um, I think he had a, a way more normal upbringing than he would he would lead you to believe, just from things I've heard or whatever. But I mean, it's just it all goes to show that he he really wants to play up this like sympathy factor. He really wants to he he wants to play up the any reason that he can have an excuse not to behave himself in a fucking reasonable manner or or do a little bit of extra work that would better himself, he'll take it. So so he would really just exaggerate his childhood, exaggerate a lot of a lot of stuff that uh that he's been through and everything and just like everybody's got their burdens and everybody's got their fucking shit that they deal with. And I, and and he just really is one of those people that just can't get over things, and just really uses them as an excuse to be a shithead in other aspects of his life. Let's take it back because I feel like I'm going off the rails here because I'm getting angry. Um, let's take it back. <clears throat> I met Patrick, the Earthling. I want to say we were about 23. I was playing at a block party with my band uh, Robot Hilarious. Now, nah, we probably weren't called that then, but we were doing something. And he shows up with a, a friend of mine and says, Hey, I've, I've listened to your songs online. This stuff is great, you know. I was talking about a lot of conspiracy-oriented stuff at that time, and this culture hadn't grown to that point. And and so he goes, "Wow, you're you know you're talking about cool shit." Uh, you know, whatever. We end up being big friends. Um, <clears throat> he knew about stuff. You know about stuff that would be com you know commonly known today. I don't even know what a good example would be. Say about um the Kennedy assassination. You know. Stuff that you would you would know today, like everybody knows who studied it now, has seen that clip of when the security is ordered to step down from the back of the limousine, you know, before they go around the curve. You know, he knew stuff like that back then. Whatever. One little example. So we really kind of vibed on that shit. And we really had a great friendship based on the fact that everyone else kind of thought both of us were crazy 
and not for the reasons that we are actually crazy, for the reasons that <laughs> for the reasons that we aren't for it was it was very it was it was a kindred spirit kind of thing and and bo- in both of our social circles people thought of us as like hey though that's the wacko that's the conspiracy guy this was before everybody and their mom knew about the federal reserve this is when when you talked about the federal federal uh reserve People just glazed over and went like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't give a shit about that. You know, shut up. This was back when, uh, you know, I remember him telling me about going out and handed out uh, literature for 9-11 was an inside job and, and getting punched in the face. You know, I mean, this is this is, was a different time when we met. This is different than now. Like it or not, a lot of people like to pretend that they were always on this fucking trail. But a lot of you fucking weren't. Sorry. And we did feel like outsiders. And we did feel fucked up. So we really had a kindred spirit thing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, stuck with each other through some some shitty fucking times. His girlfriend walked out on him. Just absolute coldest shit maybe I've ever seen. Um, he was a devastated fucking wreck. This is about a year or two after we after we met, and we were good friends, and we talked all the time. And and man, she just fucking left, and they had lived together for about five years. She just fucking. Poosh, Goodbye, nothing, and just one one conversation, I'm leaving, and then he just never saw her, you know, he, he, not that he never saw her again, but that was it, she just left, took all her shit, done, imagine, your, li- your girlfriend that you lived with for years, so, that was some fucked up shit, um, I helped him through that, I had a similar situation not long afterwards, that he helped me through, we were good friends. Uh, we've been through a lot of fucking bullshit. I was living in my truck because the place I was at had bed bugs. My whole entire back was 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 completely bit up every two inches by fucking bed bugs. And he let me stay on the couch at his place, you know. Um, which, by the way, <laughs> his place was one giant room. <laughs> it was just a basement. Just a big giant room. And different people would come in and out all the fucking time. You never knew. It was it was just kind of a flop house situation. Uh, but whatever. We've helped each other out. He stayed in my house for a month for free. You know. Uh, it's, it's just been a it's been a long road, a long friendship. We did the conscious nexus thing. And all along the way. The common theme was that we sort of met for a reason. And this is why I'm pissed off at him. We met in the circumstances that we did. And we met with with the, uh, the purpose that we did. I feel like we were meant to spread a message. And particularly that was an anti- authoritarian, anti-government, pro-human, empowering type of message. But because of his childish nature, we never were able to get any of our fucking projects past smoking weed and drinking time. When it comes time to do actual work, he was nowhere to be found and always would have an excuse always would have a reason, always would have some fucking bullshit, but he would never be there for the actual work. And that's just me trying to do some fucking projects, hoping that we get successful. He's got other things in his life that are just way bigger that he does the same fucking bullshit with, you know? Um, <clears throat> and I'm not here to tell his secrets, whatever. I'm not here to fucking... Nobody knows his real name anyways, I don't fucking think. 
Uh, so, you know, honestly, I, 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 I don't know what happened to him after we did, after we did the last show that we did, I never talked to him again. Here's what happened. All right. I'll tell you guys this. Jesus. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was a Thursday. If you want to look back in the archives, it was probably four or five uh, episodes ago. Uh, Thursday evening overdose. We did the whole show. It was decent. I think I got pissed off at him about one thing, if I remember, the whole the whole episode. At the end, he leaves with one of his girlfriends. Um, <laughs> it's a, a dumb shit. Um, so he leaves with one of his girlfriends and comes back two minutes later. And he goes, hey, can I use your phone? And he's, he looks like a ghost, like, like somebody smacked him in the face with a paranormal two by four. And he just looks like he's just sucked of all life. He's like, I need to use your phone. I'm like, what's going on? You know, he's like, I just need your phone. I'm like, okay. You know, when your friend makes that face of like, just don't even ask me. Just, I just give me your phone. I'm like, all right. So give it to him. He goes in the other room. He talks for a while. Um, <clears throat> he comes back and he's sort of tearing up, you know, and I'm, I never saw him, <clears throat> excuse me, never saw him cry. He's never seen me cry. I cried on my fucking, uh, on, on this show. And, and that was a surprise to a lot of people. So in all the years we've known each other, we didn't express, you know what? No, that's, that's not true. He cried like a baby when his girlfriend left. And I'm not even saying that to insult him. I would have to. I definitely, the way that that happened, I would have to. I'm not saying that to insult him in the least. But <laughs> I had seen him cry before. And that's not that's not a shot at him. Um, holy shit, that was rough. So... He comes back in the in the house, but anyways, it's still pretty it's still pretty fucked up that I'm seeing him sort of tear up and 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 I go, what the fuck is going on? And he goes, well, my uh, my baby's mom or whatever he calls her, I don't know what the fuck he calls her, but by the way, yeah, he's got a kid. Um, I don't know if we can get into it. He's he's got a kid. That he didn't have a relationship with for a long time. The circumstances of that are relatively unknown to me. Um, when I've tried to talk to him about it, I've been basically subtly given the hint that don't fucking talk about it. So, you know, I, I, I don't really know. Um, to most people, there is no excuse for that kind of shit. I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know what the circumstances were. Whatever it is, he has a son that, uh, he was estranged from for, for a long time. And recently he tried to get back in the kid's life. So the mother um, who he recently recontacted and whatever, apparently was now in some major, uh, crisis at the hospital and was near death. So he's back in the room. You know, this is back to the last night that I saw him. He's back in the room and he's tearing up and he's saying, Alex is, uh, is in trouble, you know? And she, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, you know? And I immediately walk outside with him like, all right, you know, um, what's the situation? He's telling me, I'm like, what, all right, what are you going to do? Uh, whatever. He's, he's going to go do this and this and go see her. And, and okay. And, uh, I said, come here, you know, and I opened my arms and I said, come over here. 
and I and I gave him a hug even though he was like resistant like a little kid who who has been molested or some shit. He like had his arms at his side and didn't really hug back. But I was like, "Listen, uh just let me know what you need and uh you know, call me call me tomorrow, whatever. Let me know what's going on." Last time I ever saw the motherfucker. That was it. That was it. Uh, And it's not as though we never helped each other through hard times before. We've, We've fucking hugged each other before. When shit was terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be bad for you to really hug your friends, you know. Something's got to fucking die. Somebody's got to fucking cheat on you some shit but yeah we've been around for each other in those situations through deaths and cheating fucking uh girlfriends and shit and we've hugged and cried a couple of times so (sighs) it was just weird that he never fucking, that he just never showed back up, never called me, never got in touch, never whatever. I mean, you know, I, I, I thought we were friends and I was going to, uh, you know, figure this whole uh, whatever happened out with him if he needed help with it. So my only point about that whole thing is that there was nothing, you know, we've, we've been through these fucking hard situations before. Been through this really fucking shitty situations together before. So I don't know what fucking changed. I honestly don't. You know, the dude has a little, he, he's got little problems with the way the show goes. Um, from what I've heard, not even from him. Because he's too non-confrontational, you know, and pussy-ish to fucking tell me. But, you know, I hear through other people, uh, he doesn't like the way I control the show and and direct the show. But I'm sorry, it can't just be run by a, a, a lunatic who just wants to say whatever he thinks is shocking at any given moment with no direction. There's got to be someone directing things. That's just fucking how it is. And I do a good job with or without him. So I, I don't give a shit. It's just he has these bullshit complaints that I've heard through other people that just make no sense. And by the way, if those other people are listening right now, I used to like it when you were involved in the show too. Other people, you know who you are. I used to really fucking enjoy your involvement in the show. And I'm extremely disappointed that you've taken. Uh, the Earthlings Kool Aid, and just drank it down and spilled it down your shirt like an idiot. Very disappointed in you, uh, and those of you who came with the Earthling that are now apparently don't anymore. That's stupid of you because I've been cool this whole fucking time. He was the one that never wanted to put in a single bit of work. Outside of actually performing on the show, which he did a great fucking job with. But he's the one that wouldn't show up for a single bit of anything unpleasant. I tell him, any t- dude, come by Tuesday afternoon. Let's work on a couple of fucking bits. Let's maybe record some stuff. We'll prank some people. We'll go out. We'll go out on the street. We'll record some fucking uh, cell phone video for the show. We'll do it. No, can't be done. Nothing. Can't be done. And the shitty part is we built this fucking show around me and him as a dynamic and the way that we fucking talked. So through everything that I've just said, keep in mind that him refusing to quit the show because we told him many times, if you don't want to fucking do it, say you don't want to do it. No, I do want to do it. I'm just going through X, Y, Z. All right, next month. Well, now it's this. All right, next month. Well, now I'm even more of a cunt and I'm a piece of shit and I'm a pussy. And I fold with the first fucking obstacle that comes to me in every situation I'm in. 
because no matter how I try to front about my tough upbringing and all this bullshit that you try to fucking portray yourself as, oh, excuse me, I changed from me to you, apparently, whatever, you know I'm talking to you, Earthling, and all this fucking bullshit that you try to portray yourself as, you're just a fucking lazy puss boy. A puss boy. A little fucking weakling. And you know it. And that's a frustrating thing at the end of the day. Is he's so fucking goddamn talented and entertaining and charismatic but he's a little pussy about fucking everything. Everything in life that actually matters. You need to do some work to support this thing that we have that's really cool. Hey, look, it pops off several times a show. And we get people calling off or calling in. And we get uh, funny bits that spring up when the two of us are in there just, just improving through a show. Yeah, it's great. Hey, you know what we could do to enhance that? Sorry, bro, I can't do that because I have to uh, sit in a basement and drink and uh, pity myself six other days a week. I can't do shit to, uh, to better myself. Oh, and he's all about, all about sitting around for three fucking hours, drinking a fucking bottle of whiskey, talking about how society is stacked against him. Talking about how everything is out to get him and he didn't have a chance because only this kind of person succeeds. And this, and meanwhile, you don't do shit, motherfucker. You're a lazy fucking child. And anyone that has to fucking deal with you. For a prolonged period of time. Has the same goddamn opinion. But guess what else idiot. Everyone also still fucking likes you. Including me. That's what a piece of shit you are. You know that people will like you no matter what. You fucking cocksucker. God damn it. And I still like you. And that's, and see, that's the fucking thing here. And I'm not going to just go ahead and let somebody else point that out as though I'm unaware of myself. Clearly, I'm fucking so angry because I'm hurt. Because we're supposed to be goddamn friends. And, and for a long fucking time, it was us against the fucking world before there were so many fucking people on social networking and Facebook and all this bullshit. And now everyone knows the fucking buzzwords that you spit around at parties and everyone fucking thinks you're smart and cool. But there was a long fucking time where it was fucking us against the world. There was a long fucking time and you know that. And you don't honor the people that, uh, you know what? You know what? You know it's true. You piece of shit. <laughs> but what happened? Nobody knows. He just disappeared. So, I don't know. I, a bunch of people have, have asked me, what happened to the Earthling, the old co-host? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. How do I how how can that be true? Because we don't have any friends in common. <laughs> Would you believe that? We have no friends in common. It's been a weird life. Um and <clears throat> as much as I've wanted an explanation about where he went. And why and why he never felt the need to call us up after we've done so much work together on this show. Listen back. 30 episodes that we did together? 30 fucking episodes that we did together plus the Thursday show? 
I mean, I, I it just blows my fucking mind how he just walks away without saying shit. I, 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 just, I, I don't fucking know. I don't know. It creeps me out. Honestly, it really creeps me out at this point. Um, if I did see him, I don't, I, I don't know. You don't treat people that care about you and that you're supposed to care about like this. Excuse me. Um, it's been absolutely nuts trying to wrap my mind around this because not only did I lose, like this is this is all for the show, but like I said, I lost that other person that I've been talking about about the world. Like we've been this fucking bubble of conversation, looking out at the world for a long time. For a long, long time. We've had a dialogue that we could both trust. And I'm probably most upset about losing that. I said right when he left, hey, let's stay fucking friends. Nope, not a phone call, not a fucking email. The guy's a goddamn child. He can't take care of him fucking self. You know, I'm not going to take shots about him. Or Adam about about him uh, and his his kid and everything that's going on because you know I don't hate him, but he's a child and fucking self. I don't know what else to say. I, I you know. He's not welcome back here right now. So, Earthling, if you're listening, I don't even know what to fucking tell you. Oh, you left your fucking headphones here, you fucking pussy. Why didn't you get your fucking headphones? And I know you fucking want them, too. You need them to record at your fucking house because you're not allowed to use the goddamn speakers because you live with old men that have to go to fucking sleep, you fucking faggot. Why don't you get your fucking... You get your fucking headphones if you're not fucking afraid of me. Huh? Fucking piece of shit. Puss boy. But I still like you. Isn't that the fucked up part? Come get your headphones, faggot. Fuck you, Earthling. This has been The Lonely Show. Good night.